Hey, there you are. Let's get this party started. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Tuesday. It's November 21st. Now we're going to do what we always do. We're going to look at some hot OTC and penny stocks by my standards. I'm a day trader. I'm out there every day trading penny stocks. These are stocks under five bucks. You can find them on any market. And naturally, I'm looking for stocks that have potential. Who wants to trade a dead stock? Now, when I find stocks that have potential, I'm normally looking at the charts. You can look at a lot of charts in a little amount of time, and you can very quickly see if there's heat in that chart. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I take the time to go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for some hot information. When I find some hot information, match it to that hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I'm sharing with you regularly. And I've got three for you right now. So let's jump into the first one I've got lined up here. This is Blue Fire Equipment, ticker BLFR. We've talked about this before. It's been a very hot stock. Over the last 30, 45 days, this oil and gas company has been making some acquisitions. Now, they don't have any revenues on the books. These acquisitions were going to bring them assets and revenues. We were just waiting for the financials to come out. Well, they came out yesterday. And oh my God, these are the wildest financials I have ever seen. Huge numbers. Now, what's more mind boggling than the numbers is the way the chart responded today. It came out yesterday and today the price dropped over 50% and then bounced back, but it was still a down day. I don't understand why that is. I think there's a lot of pent up heat that's about ready to explode. So BLFR, she finished the day at 61 cents and dropped just a little over 6% today. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those two green ticks we're always talking about, a verified profile and verified transfer agent. Real important when you're dealing with pinks, pinks don't have any validated information, not even their disclosures, their financials. This is the only information you're going to get, and it's given by an unbiased third party. So whenever I get into a pink, I really feel a lot better seeing these. That's why I make such a big deal about them. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Really? Well... That's okay. She had a down day. We don't want to see a ton of volume there. She lost about half of her volume, dropping from 383,000 shares over the last 30 days to about 200,000 shares today. Share structure, looking pretty decent, actually. We've got authorized shares now of 250 million. The company did have 2 billion shares authorized. Now, this doesn't add any shareholder equity or anything like that. What it does is reassures us. It calms us down. The authorized shares are how many shares they have in the bank, how many shares they could put on the market if they wanted to generate some money. But they can also use the shares for incentive programs, pay themselves as currency to make deals with other companies. But as I said, they could flood the market anytime they wanted with public offerings as often as they wanted and dilute the heck out of our shareholder value. But they've dropped it from $2 billion down to $250 million. Outstanding share count is only $34 million. The insiders own the lion's share, about $19 million. And the unrestricted shares, which I like to think of as the float, roughly $15 million. Now, as I was doing my due diligence and research, going around reading, I saw in their financials, they declare that the float is 12.5 million. I'm going to go for that, 12.5 million. Market cap for the company is currently at 22 million. Financials for the company. Well, BLFR doesn't have any. Surprisingly enough, they've got this $22,000 that comes around every couple of quarters. I don't know what it's for, but it's there regularly. But I wouldn't count it as revenues. They don't have anything coming in regularly. Those financials, though, they have changed their entire world. Let me share this with you. This came out yesterday, November 20th. We're just going to tag on to the big details here. As of September 30th, 2023, the company recorded about a quarter billion dollars in cash. That is up. 9,500%. Total assets, over 10 million, up over 200%. Total revenues are now at about three quarter billion dollars. That's up over 3,300%. Net income, closing in on three quarter billion. 
that's up over 2,000%. And net cash of 169,000, that's up almost 1,000%. How many financials do you see numbers like that? 9,500%, 3,300%. These are incredible numbers and still the stock fell today. I don't believe it. And I think there's going to be a change of heart when people come to their senses. The above increases are attributed to our 90% purchase of Screaming Eagle Partners. I told you that's what it was all about. Those acquisitions brought in assets and revenues. Taking a look now at the disclosures, we don't have anything here, not since 2018. So all we've got is that news. Now the company does have a lot of news here, but luckily we don't have to go through most of it. We got a shareholders letter here from the CEO. These are great. This is all the information you could be looking for in a nutshell. They tell you everything that's happened in the past and what they have planned for the future. So we're going to dive into that. And we've already looked at their third, third quarter financials. So jumping into this news press, which came out on the 17th of November. The CEO says that the company, as of November 15th, 2023, has achieved the following. The company entered into a binding letter of agreement with Resource Rock Exploration to potentially increase oil production. The company partnered with Aventus Advisory Group to work towards an uplisting to the NASDAQ. And jumping into that news press, I found a little more information, which is very important. Glad I found this. The CEO says here, working with Aventus is going to be critical for us to achieve NASDAQ uplisting in 2024. However, management is confident there will be no need for a reverse split. They think they can meet the $5 minimum bid requirement based on the company's recent merger in September. They're confident. I'm confident. So we've got reassurance that there's no reverse split on the horizon. They tell us they also reduced the authorized common shares, as I was telling you, from $2 billion down to $250 million. Now let's look forward. The company says they are finalizing the joint operating agreement with Resource Rock Exploration. They are going to acquire the remaining 10% of Screaming Eagle Partners. That will give them 100% ownership of that. They have a potential agreement with a mineral company which was shared on November 16th. Well, this bothered me. I went and looked at the news. There was no news on the 16th. I went and looked at the filings. There were no filings on the 16th. What we had was tweets. <laughs> you got to look everywhere. This came out on the 16th. This is right from their own uh, Twitter account, X account. BLFR chairman today is entering into negotiations with a leading mineral company to form a partnership where they will provide the equity for BLFR to acquire additional operating assets while the mineral company has the rights of use on the minerals for each asset acquired. Then you come all the way up to the top today. They had a lot of tweets today. I'm only going to read the last one. BLFR is in final stages on securing approximately $45 million in private credit to acquire an operating asset producing over $2 million monthly EBITDA from approximately 1.6 thousand barrels a day on 40 acres with numerous drill locations and recompletions to increase future revenues. So there's money coming in. That's not in news. That's not in filings. That's over here at Twitter. They go on to tell us about that letter of intention for the potential 1.8 to 2,000 barrels a day to close before the end of the year. I think that's what we were just reading. They are canceling 8 million shares. Actually, that's already been done. And they are planning on changing their name and their ticker. I don't know what they're going to change it to, but that's what they tell us they are doing. So we've got a lot of things happening here. The biggest thing, though, is they're growing. They're growing. They've got all these acquisitions. They've got more acquisitions coming in. They've got $45 million now to play with. And you've got those revenues that just came out yesterday that are mind Boggling. Do you think the chart might rebound? I'm thinking it will. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's take a look now at BLFR, Blue Fire Equipment. We're going to be doing our charting on this stock and all the rest on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. This is a six-month, four-hour view. 
We've got our ultimate low of triple zero one. You can't get any lower than that on the open market back in May. And then we hit a high on the 16th of this month of 83 cents. Would you believe calculated out folks from triple zero one to 83 is 830,000 percent gains. Every hundred dollar bill you had had here, you would have made $830,000 up here. Mind boggling, right? I keep saying that. So we saw this start to run about halfway through October. She was here at about a penny. That's a huge run up to 83 cents. That's 8,300% gains. We looked at it here on the 27th of October when she was roughly 32 cents and we've had 150% gain since then. But as you can see today, today she fell hard all the way down here to about 21 cents from 72 cents. That is well over 50%. She came all the way down through the 20, through the 200 haul and the 50, and then shot back up. You know what? I'm not worried. I see a big run coming. In my mind, I look at a lot of charts. What this looks to me is what I coined a pillar. This bar went through the 20 and then a big SMA. Two of them, as a matter of fact, the 200 haul and the 50 day SMA deep down with a long wick, like you would do with a stake, a pillar down into the ground and you bring it up to build on top of so that you can go up. This to me looks like she is ready to climb hard. She put a deep pillar into the ground. All of our SMAs look good. Our 200 day is even starting to climb now. From the start of this run, we had lots of volume till now. The volume has been getting less and less. Do you think it might change? I'm thinking there's a strong possibility. Our oscillators are not exciting. Our PPO is on a decline right now. Our MACD has already had a negative crossover and pushing down. And our RSI has fallen from 66 down to 53. It was a hard day for this company. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view, we got a low bubble in this corner of 15 cents, a nice steady climb up to that high of 83 and this abrupt drop. Now this is right where we looked at it, right? Look where she came down to through that and back up and look at our 200 day SMA on that same support line. Very, very interesting. So this didn't just go through the 50 day. It has gone through the 200. I am even more confident now. So you can see she's hanging around the 50 day SMA on the one hour chart. She broke that. She's come back up. She is still under her nine. She is still under the 50. She's got some work to do. Our oscillators, um, they're not very strong. Everything is still actually pushing down. Not hard, but everything is still pushing down. Even though our chart looks like it's going up five day, five minute. Well, there's your 200 going across the board, got flat right there. She's totally flat and she's still flat and she has been sitting on top of it. The price is solid on this 200. Here is where she broke away in the middle of today. It wasn't even at the beginning of the day, right? The news came out yesterday. You'd have thought it had broke down pre-market, aftermarket in the morning. It didn't. It didn't break down until noon. 11.55 is when she shot down and then came right back up. We're talking, these are five minute bars here. She came right back up. She's had some punches through the 200, but our highs are getting lower. All of our SMAs have crossed the 200 and are pushing down. Our oscillators <laughs> look like they're in recovery mode. Our PPO is about ready to cross the pink. It's climbing. You can see our ADX. ADX I like to call trend continuation. As long as the line is straight, whatever trend you have going on up here is continuing. I really can't tell a trend if I was to draw a line from low to low, it looks like she's going up. So between the blue line, my PPO going up and my ADX going down, that is a pattern I look for on my screen. When you see the two of them separating, guaranteed 100% your price is climbing. And it does work in reverse. When you see the red line coming up and the blue line coming down and they're getting closer and closer, there is a fall guaranteed 100%. Our MACD is coming up. She's right up underneath the signal line. Green bars are getting bigger and accumulating. 
and our RSI is pretty planted right now. She's at 50. So the chart doesn't look real hot. Matter of fact, it looks pretty droopy and I can't explain why it did it. I'm anticipating a breakout. I've seen this big bar here. That tells me one thing. I see those mind boggling numbers on the financials. That tells me another thing. Why it dropped, I have no clue. I'm thinking opportunity in the making. But you make up your own mind, folks. Either way, it's not going to hurt you to put BLFR on your watch list. She's showing us a lot of gains so far. Maybe she'll show us some more. Let's take a look at another hot penny stock here. This is Wave Dancer, ticker WAVD. Now, she's got a lot going on right now. Not too long ago, she had a reverse split of 1 in 10. On this side of the reverse split, it's all good. We've got ourselves a micro small float now and they are in compliance with the NASDAQ. No more hot water, no more trouble. Now what caught my attention to the company was her chart. She's bouncing off of a 52 week low and behind that came another bigger bounce propelling her through the 200. What we've got now is an atypical breakout chart that is breaking out. Well, when I did my due diligence, I found that that second bounce on November 16th was correlated to a news press. They just got involved with a reverse merger. That's why we're looking at this. So Wave Dancer finished the day at $3.50 with about 23% gains. She is on the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. There are no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks, and you can trade it pre-market, aftermarket as well. There's a lot of benefits to trading these penny stocks on the major exchanges. So what does Wave Dancer do? Well, they tell us over here that Wave Dancer is based in Fairfax, Virginia and has been servicing federal and commercial customers since 1979. Definitely not a startup company. The company is in the business of developing and maintaining information technology systems, also known as IT. They also modernize client information systems, perform other IT related professional services for the government and commercial organizations as well. So what was the relative volume around Wave D today? She took a dip today too, thank God she took gains, dropping from about 860,000 shares down to 630,000 shares today. Share structure, that's looking good. We've got that low float. Outstanding share count is now just 2.1 million. That's all the shares. The insiders own just under a half a million. That leaves us with a super duper small float of 1.7 million. Folks, with a float that small, it doesn't take a lot to move the charts. Imagine if they sold, I don't know, 5 million shares in one day. They would have to sell all these shares three times over in one day. That becomes supply and demand issues. That's when you get your prices to start to run. Market cap for the company is way down there at 6.2 million. Financials for the company. Well, they're making money. As of 2019, they were over $10 million. Don't forget those three zeros. We got to add behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. They kicked it up to a high in 2021 of 15 million. And at the end of 2022, they were at 12 million. They're taking profit all the way along and they got to take home 2.5 million at the end of 2022. Quarterly, they're not doing bad, but they're on the low end right now. Year ago, they were at 3.7. They were doing a little over 2 million all the rest of the quarters. And this last quarter, they're down to 2 million. And I haven't seen a most recent financial come out. They are due this one for September right now. Taking a look at that balance sheet. They've got a little money in the bank, cash and cash equivalents equal about $330,000. Total assets, $6.2 million. Liabilities, about half that, $3.6 million, which means we have positive shareholder equity, $2.6 million. You want to know what that's worth? Take all the shares, divide it into that. That's what the shares should be worth. Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got our financial there. There is one. Let's go take a quick look at this. I didn't see any news about this. I'm just going to jump down to her revenues. Revenues were 1.9 million in 2023. The three months ended. Compared to last year, we were at 2.1. So she is down a little bit. All right. And uh, this 8K correlates to the financials as well. 
And then all of these Form 4s were shares being given to the management as incentive. It had nothing to do with purchases or sales. So let's take a look at that news now. Well, they're in the black. They're making money. Back in 2019, they were over $10 million. We know that's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. They kicked it up to a high in 2021 of 15 million and then fell back to 12 million in 2022. But they've been taking profits all through the way, taking home 2.5 million at the end of 2022. Looking at their quarterly reports, a year ago was their strongest report at 3.7 million. The following were dropping little by little until we're down here to 2 million. And their most recent financial just came out. It dropped a little bit more. They're down to 1.9 million. Looking at that balance sheet, cash and cash equivalents, money in the bank, so to speak. They got $338,000. Total assets, 6.2 million. Total liabilities, 3.6 million, which isn't all bad because we've got positive equity down here for the shareholders of 2.6 million. You want to know what that number means? Divide the share count into that number, and that'll tell you roughly what the share should be worth. Disclosures. All right, we've got a few disclosures over here. We've got a 10Q, the most recent financial, and with each financial comes out an 8K. So both of those have to do with that. And then all these Form 4s. We like Form 4s most of the time. These tell us whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. We're mostly interested when they buy and sell. That's not the case here. They were part of some incentive program and they just got a whole bunch of free shares given to them. Must be nice. Let's take a look at that news now. So I have gone back here to the beginning of October when they tell us that the CEO made an insider buy of 350,000 shares. You didn't see that in the news. It was also at the uh, beginning of October they did that 1 in 10 reverse split. And it was just here recently, the 21st of November, that they regained compliance with the NASDAQ. And right here in the middle is the big news. Wave Dancer announces merger agreement with Firefly Neuroscience. This came out on the 16th of November. So they tell us here this merger is to create a NASDAQ-listed commercial stage AI-enabled medical technology company focused on bringing FDA-cleared Brain Network Analytics Platform to NASDAQ Capital Markets. Wave Dancer has announced that it has entered into a definitive merger agreement with a privately held commercial stage medical technology company, Firefly Neuroscience. The combined company will focus on continuing to develop and commercialize Firefly's artificial intelligence driven brain network analytics platform, which was previously cleared by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Upon closing, which is currently expected Q1 of 2024, the combined company is expected to operate under the name Firefly Neuroscience and trade on the NASDAQ. The transaction comes at an important time for Firefly as we accelerate the commercialization of our BNA platform. The BNA is the first practical and feasible way for frontline clinicians to objectively measure brain functions. Now I was going to try to explain what it is they do. It was way too difficult. So I'm just going to read what we got down here. BNA is an FDA cleared cloud-based AI powered platform used to objectively assess brain function by comparing patient electrocephalograms with a proprietary database of standardized high definition EEGs and behavioral data. BNA is used by psychiatrists and neurologists in the United States to support the diagnosis of mental illness and cognitive disorders. That's primarily what it does. So we've got a reverse merger here using AI in the medical field, which is where I really want to see it. And we've got a super duper low float and a chart that's ready to break out. Let's go look at that chart. We're now taking a look at Wave Dancer, ticker WAVD. This is a six month, four hour chart. We've got a real good high back here of $13.10 and a wicked fall all the way down here to about $2.50. She tried to break out a few times, 
did it here. She jumped from about uh, $3 up to $9. That was a 300% run. Came back down, took another jump up to just over $5, and then she crashed down to this low of a buck ten, And that is a 52-week low. She started bouncing off of that, and then on the 16th, she got the news and took off. Now, this is what I like to call a directional intentional spike. What I mean is it's telling me what it wants to do. It wants to break out. It started off way down here, shot up. The bar stops right up underneath the 200, and you get this long wick over the 200. Then it falls back down. I expect that, but I want it to fall down no lower than where it started. This fell higher. That is a perfect placement. That tells me she's looking for a chance to break out. When she fell back down, she didn't even touch the nine. She is floating on that nine until she decided to break out right there. She hit the nine, pushed herself up over that 200. Went sideways, hit the nine day SMA again, and then launched herself going from about 285 up to about five bucks here just under 100% gains. And she looks like she is going to continue this growth. She has pulled back after that big bounce and she's roughly at 350 right now. But you can see our nine day has crossed the 200. Here comes our 20. That'll be a golden cross. Here comes our 50 and 200 haul. Every time one of these crosses that 200, it's going to give that price more power to rise. Our volume was real strong in the 16th. We've had a little volume afterwards, not much, but it's a lot more than we had before. Looking at our oscillators, they're in great shape. Every single one of them is pushing to the moon right now. PPO, percentage price oscillator, MACD, green bars are accumulating, and our RSI is in the overbought right now. It is at about 70 and a half. It is on fire. All of our technicals are on fire. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she's on a downtrend here. She comes down to that low bubble of a buck ten, bounces off of it. News comes out. She rips, comes back down to her nine day. She's floating on that, falls to her 20, not the 50. That shows how light the price is. It wants to climb. She bounced off of that 20, hit it again, and vroom, took a nice zoom today. And then came back down and landed perfectly, perfect landing right on top of the nine day SMA. All of our other SMAs have just crossed the 200 and are looking nice. Our oscillators, they have a lot of strength, but this drop right here at the aftermarket period has taken everything sideways. Let's look at our five day, five minute then. That's not a bad chart. We got a low bubble in this corner of $1.34, high bubble in that corner of $4.95, and it's an uptrend all the way on top of our 200-day SMA. She is bouncing on that firmly, folks. You can see this. So every time she comes down, you can almost presume there's a strong likelihood she's not going to go below that 200. Today was a very strong day. She started off right at the 200 at about uh, $2.82, climbed evenly. Look at that, nice and even all day. Started to go sideways, looked like she may hit the 20, but she didn't. Took a punch at the end of the day. Don't know why. She went from $3.95 up to $4.95, a whole dollar extra. Did somebody put in a buy by accident? They forgot to change something. Came back down. We have broke the 50. We are turning around right now. We got a strong punch here through the 50. And right now, actually, she's looking as weak as she's ever looked. She is underneath the nine-day SMA, but still above the 200, but underneath all the others. The oscillators are pretty weak right now. But come on, folks, we've got a reverse merger on the table. We've got a low float. And when you look at the chart from the four-hour perspective, you can see she's on a breakout. The volume is stronger here than it has been in a long time. I think she has a good chance of breaking out. Put WAVD on your watch list. If she doesn't break out, it didn't cost you a thing except the uh, 10 minutes of my time sharing this information with you. What happened? Where's the third stock? <laughs> Sorry, folks. I had a situation arise in my house with the dogs. It was kind of serious. I had to take care of it. But I didn't cheat you. I've given you two hot charts, two hot stocks. I think they're going to take gains. But of course, I didn't tell you everything about them. You're going to need to do some more due diligence, especially since you're investing your money and not mine. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. 
see ya.